It's the end of May, and I'm looking for odd jobs I can accomplish quickly with only one hand, or at least with limited use of a second hand. I've had something in mind for a few weeks. In actuality, I've had this in mind for most of last season and through the winter. I put down plastic to keep weeds from germinating in the wood chips in this plot. It was old when I put it down here and started to rip last summer, so I need to do a little bit of tidying up in this patch. When I first began farming commercially, I was also working for a modular home construction company. The company I worked for was small and local, but they worked with a large manufacturer in Canada, meaning the houses were shipped as modules, and we would set the house with a crane, put it together, get it weather tight, and finish it for customers here. When they were trucked down from Canada into Maine, houses would be wrapped in plastic, so mud, rain, and anything else would not spit up from the road into the house itself during travel. The first few houses upon which I worked were wrapped in black plastic. That was before the company switched to white, likely based on cost. But I went dumpster diving and saved as much of the black plastic as I could. Over the past decade, I've used pieces as long as possible, then cut away frayed portions and used the rest some more. Some of this stuff is definitely on its last legs. But I'll be darned if I'm not going to make it walk every mile on those legs before I throw it away. The vision I have in my head for this particular plot, which is populated with a few apple trees and several varieties of high bush blueberry, is that the strawberries will colonize all of the area beneath and between those bushes and trees. But first, I want to make sure that they're going to spread into a weed-free area, which is why I'm using this black plastic to hopefully germinate all possible weed seeds in the wood chips. I feel like I need a little bit more time with that because I've already lost one large patch of strawberries to weeds that were trucked in with the wood chips. In the meantime, I can use these suckers to fill in areas in this little strip right behind the compost bins that the strawberries have not filled in themselves. Transplanting strawberries is a relatively easy task. All you have to do is dig up the little plants that have rooted at the end of the shoots that the strawberries send out across the ground as part of their propagation routine, move them and replant them in a new place.
now that's done, or at least done for now, I can get to prepping some of the beds that I'm going to be using for potatoes this year. I plant my potatoes much later than the average person in Maine, all due to the fact that I read an article in Rodale's Organic Gardening magazine several years ago, which highlighted the work that a small farmer in Siberia has done to beat potato beetles. The article basically laid out that what he observed was the life cycle of the beetles, and trying to plant potatoes early in the spring essentially allowed the beetles to wake up from their larvae stage and find a huge smorgasbord of readily available food. He tried to disrupt that cycle by planting his potatoes after the first flush of Colorado potato beetles had hatched. I figure if this guy can do it in Siberia, I can do it in Maine. We don't have a very long growing season here, but it's got to be longer than he has in Siberia. So I tried it, and it worked. Ever since then, I've planted my potatoes on June 17th every year. Lo and behold, at least at this site, I have had very few Colorado potato beetles. Mm -hmm.